Let's do some full moon cruise. McNasby's Oyster Packing House sits in the heart of Eastport, Maryland, on the shore of Spa Creek, just a mile off the Chesapeake Bay. McNasby's Oyster Packing House opened in 1919 and was one of the most successful canneries on the Chesapeake. Oystermen from Maryland and Virginia brought their oyster harvest to Mac McNasby's to be paid by the barrel. Oysters were first discovered in 1607 by Captain John Smith, a great explorer who was one of the first men to explore the Chesapeake. On his third exp expedition down the bay, he found baskets filled high with oysters at an abandoned Indian campfire. He assumed they were being cooked for food, so he gave it to a starving crew and brought it back to the colonies, which then became the staple food for the bay, which leads us to the Oyster Wars. The Oyster Wars were between the government and the oystermen. Virginia and Maryland divided the bay into two properties. The war was between oystermen and oystermen, or oystermen and the government. They fought over where the boundaries were and if you were taking their oysters. There were ship battles just like the pirates, and oysters were their gold. As stated in the February 1884 article in the Washington Post, oystermen were called pirates. The story writes, it's extremely convenient to these oystermen not to know in which state they are working. If a man is caught trespassing by the Virginia authorities, he swears stoutly he is across the Maryland line. And he can, also, he can bring a whole village and police from both sides to swear that he was on the Maryland side. When he is caught by the Maryland authorities, the whole population turns out to make an oath that he was on the Virginia side. And after a year or two, either side sends down to find the marks left by the previous commission. Every mark has disappeared, and not a man can be found in either Virginia or Maryland. Who knows anything about them? Mac McNasby used to watch his workers every day, working hard from September to April. It didn't matter what color you were, it mattered if you could shuck oysters. Many workers lived in Eastport, white or black, or came from the Eastern Shore. Because of McNasby's, colored matters as much as the person's shoe size next to you. Because in Eastport time in the 1870s and the early 1900s, the only thing was matter if you were able to work. Very early, um, you know, and that and McNasby's was in a business for over 100 years mm -hmm. and had really been a very, very important part of the community. Barge houses were used to live on the water in the spring and summer and to be moved onto the land in the winter. Mayor O'Moyer, the former alderman of Eastport, is talking about the barge houses. Some of the workers at McNasby's lived on barge houses. The one next to McNasby's is now the Barge House Museum of Eastport. There, is a, there were a couple of barge houses, which were old barges, actually. There used to be an old water that came up on the land, and it was where workers that uh, used to work at the Masby's lived. There's only one of them left now, and it's been really renovated. It's called the Barge House Museum, which is next to the Masby's. Um, there used to be 18 oyster shucking plants in the Eastport and City Dock area. Now there's only one left. It is McNasby's. At the peak of oysters, you can find a creek without an oyster packing plant. That is why McNasby's is so important. It's the last piece of maritime history we have at the time when oysters were at their peak and watermen were at their finest. And some of the old timers who lived there back in the 1920s and 1930s say that the, there were so many oysters that they literally paid the streets of Eastport with the, the shells. And that, that's true. I mean, Oystering has been to the Chesapeake Bay as tobacco has been to our farms, which means it is a key component in our economy, which now oystering is worth over $2 million a year compared to the $4 million a year in 1870 due to the lack of oysters. But still it is a key component to our economy and culture. See. And then when that started to dwindle and McNasby moved over here to Eastport, he employed a lot of people that lived in Eastport. Uh, so it became a, uh, a form of, of employee base for the, for the city. At the time of McNasby's, there were over 2,000 oyster packing plants in the Maryland region. Each of them had their unique can. Harris's Seafood House has around 500 of those cans. We went there just to see in reality how prominent business was of oystering in the state of Maryland. McNasby's had their own can. 
There's light blue in there called Pearl There's Oysters, named after McNasby's wife, Pearl. Memories, part of some old waterman's memories. Not long ago she'd roar. When McNasby's was up and running, the bay had so many oysters they didn't have to scour the bottom of the bay for them. Now they do. They must dive for them at the W.C. Harris Seafood House. Oyster diving is the most proficient way of harvesting oysters. They couldn't do that at the time of McNasby's because of the lack of technology. The oysters in this area of the bay are caught right now. Um, a diver, I know it sounds silly with the ice the way it is, but an actual diver goes overboard in a wetsuit, so he's going to keep wet all day long. But what they do now is that they, they actually heat water with the motor and they pump hot water and air down at the same time. So. Um, like taking a nice warm bath all day long. He swims on the bottom carrying those crates. The crate that's in the back there is one of a couple he has on the boat. He drags it along with him and he picks up oysters while he's scuba diving. When he gets it full, he tugs on it and the captain pulls it up using that winch right there and then they, they grate him and sort them and throws him another crate and he goes back again. As you can see from the photos from McNasty's Oyster Packing Plant and the video from Harris House, the oyster shucking hasn't changed very much. The only difference that I saw at first was one was in color and the other was in black and white. Then as Jason Ruth at the Harris House told us that their shuckers has a little machine right there on their table that puts a V-shaped dent into the oysters which helps the shuckers open it, but their styles are still very similar. It makes a little V in the end, so you just stick your knife in and open it up. On this ship, they are pa they are patent tonguing, which is one of the four ways to oyster. A patent tongue is like a crane. It is controlled by the oystermen through the pedals, hence why they are such good dancers. One of the oystermen's job was to separate the good oysters from the bad oysters. If the oysters were on this day, they are considered bad oysters because they are too young to harvest. The oyster assembly lines from McNasby's and Harris House still look the same. They had the long row of oysters, people putting the oyster meat into baskets to still with the water. They still got paid by the gallon. And they still use that handy knife. But at the end of the job, there is always time for a net. If you're a shucker, you're a waterman, or anybody who worked in the company, you were always welcome. Water quality affects the oyster growth greatly. A change in temperature, dissolved oxygen, or presence of diseases can stunt oyster growth. Oyster maturity is based on three process, meaning it takes three years for the oyster to reach maturity. In turn, losing a harvest in three years, but this is not due to overfishing. In fact, after speaking with John Van Alsey, a waterman from Southern Maryland, we learned that there are actually less workers in this field today. Back then, we could walk from one side of Eco Alley docks to the other by oyster boats. All docked right there. We won't ever reach a historical amount like in the mid-1870s, but being the largest estuary in the world, we can make a comeback. Now, this was a big one, uh, <clears throat> and there's a, a very kind of really cool photograph that shows uh, Mac McNasby uh, loading these gallon cans of oysters onto this dirigible mm -hmm. that actually flew the oysters up to uh, Ohio. The door on McNasby's story is closed, but the door on the Oysterman story is always open to change. Let's do some full moon cruising. We'll slip away in my canoe and we'll ride the waves while we build a coo on our full moon cruise. We'll do some full moon cruising. Take along some magic brew and take a sip to get in the mood. Cause I'm so in love with you. He's in the sky, out over the island. And watch for the glow of that big red orb. Rising over the horizon, we'll do some full moon cruise.